Hi, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. If you have an Aries rising, sun or moon, this is your July 2023 astrology forecast. All right, guys, let's see what kind of opportunities or what kind of challenges you will need to face this month. We do have a very active sky and we do have 21 aspects, actually, and also the lunation, the full and the new moon makes two aspects. Um, three of them are really, really benefit and uh, benefic. And then we do have Venus going retrograde and Chiron by end of the month. And which is really big and life altering. It is like a collective pivotal change. Aries uh, and Libra notes. The notes are changing actually signs and you're going to be one of the golden child of the next 18 months because of the North Node. Rahu, the head of the dragon, is moving into your sign. And the North Node, it is a mathematical point. The nodes are mathematical points. And uh, it's associated with the eclipses. So right now we're going to have Aries and uh, Libra eclipses. And what you have to know, it's going to be about uh, the self-identity, who we're going to take care of ourselves and our relationships. And uh, what you have to know, North Node actually is a Jupiterian energy. So it's a blessing, generosity, abundance. And because of it's going into your sign, you will be the one who is actually blessed the next 18 months. Well, you know, like if you are having really good aspects with your natal charts. Okay, let's see what's going on. On the first of the month, we're going to have a Kazemi. Mercury, Sun, Kazemi in Cancer. Cancer is in your fourth house. That is some amazing miracle in your living situation, something with, with an opportunity to purchase a home or renovate a home or, or win, actually win something. But definitely it's a miraculous change in your family or family situation. Then this Kazimi going to actually sextile with Jupiter and Jupiter is um, here at nine degrees and the Kazimi is going to happen at nine degrees. Uh, and it's in your second house. So actually it's creating some kind of profit. So most likely you will have an opportunity to rent a house, to sell a house or purchase a house, most likely selling. And then it's going to be very, very profitable. Also, it could bring in an opportunity to become a real estate agent or a mortgage broker. Um, and, you know, like, like maybe you are going to invest in multiple properties. That's going to happen for you right now. Definitely your earning uh, is um, or, or the fund is going to be available even if you need to renovate your home. So the next next thing when I, uh, what's going to happen, that's on the second of the month, and it's going to happen Venus and, uh, and Uranus going to actually square in 21 degrees. And Venus is in your fifth house in Leo, and that's, how, that's where it's going to go to retrograde. So it is actually some kind of... Um, financial pressure here so it could indicate something like all right i need to actually explore if i should invest in um like maybe in uh, artificial intelligence maybe in uh, in gold because of leo over here and the fifth house is investment or maybe you're going to need to spend a lot of money for your child. And it could be because the, the child has to go maybe to camp because fifth house is something with summer vacation and camp and fun and joy based. And over here, Uranus could be like the airplane tickets could be very expensive right now because I, I didn't buy it in time. So that could be a pressure over here because of finances. Um, all right, so let's see what else is happening. 
On the third, we're going to have a Capricorn full moon, and it's going to happen actually 11 degrees, which is the second decan. So if you count, uh, and the second sign from Capricorn is uh, Taurus. So it's going to actually influence by a Venetian um, flavor. And Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So actually this full moon sextiles with Saturn retrograde in Pisces. Saturn retrograde is in your 12th house. 12th house is everything that's hidden. It is also representing your dream world. So it might go in, you might go into actually be more tired or sleep more, but it's not going to be like you are exhausted, but you know, you just need to sleep more or you have opportunity to retreat and, and just not do anything and just let go of the of that kind of um, pressure to work and, and just focus on your career or, you know, like anything, even family matter as well. Um, so it is like, all right, I have time right now and I'm capable to sleep a little bit or sleep in a little bit. It could also indicate like you are going to let go of something which is because of the full moon is completion, ending of contract. And it could be something with maybe right now I'm willing to let go of some kind of addiction that doesn't serve me anymore. I don't need to solve everything or I don't need to find the answer for everything. You know, I can just be. And also it could be like if you are working actually in um, where in uh, nursing homes or hospice, maybe you're just going to get retired and, and you know, like your career is, is over, but actually it's beneficial because of you will be happier with it. And this full moon also going to be across uh, the sun and uh, Mercury combos. So it's not Kazimi anymore because it's over 17 minutes, but it's still combos conjunction. And then uh, the moon is in 11 degrees, right? So it's going to oppose Mercury 11 degrees. And it could be some kind of conflict between career and home situation. Some of you might have um, like an issue because of maybe you let go of a career and your family is uh, not feeling secure or 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 they, they feel like, uh, you know what, you shouldn't just get retired yet, even if you are very happy with your decision, but they feel like maybe you're going to get um, bored or you're not going to know what to do with your time. Or if you let go of a career or work, then it could be like, and if you still like in your 40s, 30s, 50s, uh, your family going to feel insecure about that. And you can have some kind of argument about this uh, or disagreement. And then, uh, but this moon also going to try Jupiter, which is really, really good because Jupiter is a benefit. And in Taurus, in your second house, obviously you are not just golden child because of the node. North node is going in your first house. But Jupiter is in your second house, so financially you will do very, very well And the next 18 months. And it is like bringing in money, bringing in talents, gifts, and earnings. Your, your material possession is, uh, possession is actually expanding the assets that you have. It's expanding. You can get really expensive jewelries, or you might go in to invest in land, or maybe in... Um, some kind of, uh, I don't know, Uranus is there in your second in Taurus. It could be something with recycling program or recycle stock or, you know, anything with uh, farm-related AI or farm-related, um, not, not artificial intelligence, but uh, uh, elect electricity or, or it could be something with self-sufficient farming as well. All right, so moving forward from here, and we're going to go on the 7th when Mercury and Uranus going to sextile, and on the 9th, uh, actually Mercury going to trine with Neptune. So this is very, very beneficial because Mercury first going to trine Neptune and then uh, with Uranus sextile. Um, both of them is a sweet energy. It is a welcoming energy, a supportive energy. So what you see over here, it is, again, it could be like I'm going to invest in solar panel on my home because this is your house. 
or I going to, to actually update and uh, have a smart home, everything AI uh, ruled in the house, or a security system. You want to um, actually invest in a security system, something what is more uh, safety, because that is safety, uh, Taurus wants safety. And then Mercury and Neptune could be something like, you know what, I going to get and go for a retreat with my family because of there is something what we need to heal between us. And, and it has to be, we're going to go for a retreat where we're going to communicate. Um, or I have to actually visit someone in the hospital because of Neptune and 12,000 Pisces is hospital. Mercury could be, Mercury rules your third post, third post is sibling. So it could be um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, visiting someone in the hospital who could be a sibling, a friend, or a neighbor. And you know, like you are taking care of that person. Okay, so what else is happening over here? Um, um, yes, yeah, so on the 10th, we're going to have actually Mercury opposed Pluto. And, and yes, Mercury opposed post Pluto. So it's going to be 29 degrees uh, in Cancer Mercury and Pluto just went retrograde and went back to, to Capricorn. So this is again some kind of pressure between you and uh, your family and career. So they might go in to feel your absence because of you are constantly working or you only concentrate on your family. Or, or, you know, uh, only concentrate on your career, or it could be vice versa, like, like uh, the family is scared because you have some kind of power struggle at work, and they they scared you will lose your job or you will get fired. And, you know, this is going to Mercury also going to square the notes, uh, and the notes are in zero degree. Mercury is going to uh, Leo on the 11 to zero degree. So, it is squaring the notes here in your second and date house. So it is something to do with investment, stock market, uh, um, wheel, uh, trust. And at, actually it could be, uh, no, no, no. Yes, yes, stock market and, uh, and anything to do with um, uh, your earnings as well. So it could be like you might going to have some bad news about, uh, you know, like you are losing something that you invested in or the value is decreasing. Uh, but don't worry because, you know, like soon you're going to be the golden child. So it's going to go back up for you. And then on the 14th, we have the sun uh, following Mercury and sextile with Uranus and the sun going to trine with Neptune, the same situation, a solar planner, something to invest in energy, self-sufficient, uh, farming, land, um, or it could be like, all right, I'm healing a relationship with a family member through to serve the person, to take care of the person, maybe somebody is in hospice, or hospital, or in jail, and you have to visit, but somehow there is forgiveness. There is like, all right, I have to forgive to this person. And then we came to the 17th. That's good, and that's big. Because of uh, we're going to have a cancer new moon here, 24 degrees here. So that's the third decan. So it's going to get a Piscean flavor. So it's going to actually get influenced by Neptune and Jupiter, right? Pisces. So it is like you check the, the, the um, position of those planets. And uh, then you also check what other planet is over here in Pisces, that's Saturn, right? So it could be some kind of permanent situation with a house buying situation, a house option. You might going to actually be capable to to buy your your home and stay there for a longer period of time. You can invest in a retreat center. You can open an addiction center, um, and you know, like that is that's influence. You can invest in pharmaceutical. So that that could be really really great. And on the other hand, the new moon is a new beginning, so you can actually start. Uh, 
something new with your family, new rules, which is going to be a lot more happier, more nurturing. Actually, you might going to have a lot of amazing times to spend together. You're going to have more time perhaps for your family, for your children. And the same day, actually, this is going to make two um, aspect and it's going to the moon going to sextile Uranus and Neptune, just like the Sun and Mercury before. Exactly the same things, like helping others, uh, invest in pharmaceutical, going to the hospital, doing services. All right. And then we're going to have the North Node moving to your sign and the South Node to your opposite sign, Libra. Well, you know, some of you are going to become really like, okay, I'm going to nurture myself because I haven't for a long while. And everything going to be about me because I always actually give, 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 give. And, you know, like your relationship could go south and it could, uh, you have to be careful areas on that kind of aspect, like some of you going to divorce because south node is Saturnian energy in your seventh house. You can lose business partner. If you have a legal matter, you suit someone or somebody sues you, it can go also uh, uh, um, fell through so it, it could actually turn uh, south for you and then also but on the other hand you will become like very very um, optimistic and confident and uh, and uh, yes let's the go get it uh, girl or boy kind of situation coming up so you will feel abundant you will feel happy and joyous and actually, you will realize how important self-love is. And perhaps you were one of the person who just, uh, you know, sacrificed a lot the last few years. And you didn't really get appreciated by a relationship. And you will see, say, I'm done over here. You know, I, I, want, I went out. I want a divorce. Or, you know, even if it's a business partnership, it could be like, you know what, this business partner not working for me. And, you know, but I rather to do it on my own because I know I can. And actually I can make more money or I can do it differently and to become more successful. All right, so then let's go to the 20s. And on the 20s, we're going to have, uh, again, uh, Sun and Neptune trying. And also Saturn going to oppose Mars because Mars just went to Virgo on the 10th and it's going to oppose Saturn. So that is in your 6th house and 12th house. It could be some kind of issue with a tenant, with a roommate, with with uh, yeah, rental property. Your dog or, or pet could get uh, actually... Um, you know, ill, sick, or maybe even run over with a car. So you have to be careful with that. And, uh, or maybe just a surgery for the pet infection. But you also have to be careful with heart-related issues, like like your your blood pressure can spike or, or you know, uh, something with, with circulatory issues could uh, be actually magnified and you will need to watch the sixth house is your... Um, your what is that that's your head and because of Virgo ruled by Mercury and uh, Mercury also going to go to Virgo by end of the month on the 28th so it's from Cancer to Leo and after go to Virgo and then Palasatini on the 10th also going to your sixth house so you're going to solve your issues but there could be some kind of thyroid issue the Mercury is the messenger in the body it could be the, the chemical messengers or it could be something with thyroid issue as well. So it might go into spike and you will have to seek for advice um, from a doctor or, or get a new physician because of uh, you going to fight with your physician and, and, and you will get a new one. All right, and what else is going to go on here? So then we're going to have a grand cross and it's gonna happen in your first house seventh house and uh, in your uh, tenth house and fourth house with sun and pluto opposition and the notes in words this is nasty and it's nasty for everyone though but it is a major fight with a family member or a significant other about families 
So you, you might go into fight with your partner because of the, your family is overwhelming or, or, you know, always on your nerves or, or you know, like it, it, it is really a struggle over here. It could be about career as well, but uh, most likely it could be also a legal issue. So you might go into get into a legal situation because of that family member and your significant other doesn't agree and, you know, it could bring in some kind of problem it could be also you going to be sued by your your uh, employer so it could be because of seventh houses legal matters and um, pluto in your tent it's your employers it's like an authority figure you have done something they let you go and you know like that could happen or actually you will sue them because they let you go and but unfortunately because so not is in the seventh house it could turn out um to be uh, not beneficial for you. Uh, yes. Um, and then we have another aspect, which is a saving grace. When Venus retrograde, Venus goes retrograde in your fifth house, could bring back an investment opportunity, good time with your children. It could also bring back a manager or, or, or some kind of creativity, creative business. It could be like uh, like you can uh, open up a sport club or or your children can be really really become very good in sports or or in their hobbies as well and you're gonna be proud of them. They can win prizes, so it's good. And then it's going to conjunct with Mercury, so you can find an agent, a manager. You can open a joy or pleasure based business. Uh, anything with with like um, a travel agencies or buy a yacht or buy something like I don't know a chopper something like that but you know it's good it's a good energy over here contract some kind of contract open a club uh, something like that yes so that's a saving grace and as I said Mercury goes in its house uh, Pallas gonna be there as well so a lot of emphasis is going to be on your head or on your pet because that is the cause of pet and your pet might get hit or, you know, need the surgery and you need to take care of that pet. It, it is actually a saving grace, as I said. So the pet most likely going to get healed or, or you will get healed as well, even if your blood pressure hikes or, or your thyroid issues coming up, you will get healed. But, you know, there is definitely, uh, uh, it has to be a focus on your head or it could, yeah has to be a focus on your head. All right, Arias, if you love my videos, please subscribe, like, share with others so they can also benefit from my readings and comment below. I thank you going to take me very far. And uh, uh, if you would like to have a personal reading with me, then check out my website, which is www.urbanbeach.org. Um, and I'm going to see you in August. Thank you so much for your attention. Bye for now.